Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom Podcast. I'm really excited for today's guest. His name is Rob Buffington. He's the founder and CEO of Gordian Staffing. And I've just I just interviewed another client who also runs a staffing agency. But um, I'm really excited about this talk. He's going to be talking about uh, managing teams, remote work from home, managing productivity, culture. I'm really excited. So, um, Rob, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Tell people about your background, your story, and how you got started, and we'll go from there. Bought and sold and founded uh, uh, quite a few companies at this point, Um, probably around a dozen if you add them all up in different fields. And about five or six years ago, I was uh, in California with a uh, a building services company doing gutter cleaning, window cleaning, and the like. And just couldn't find help with the admin staff. I was trying to get an admin assistant in the office and just didn't have much luck. So I actually started to hire out of Mexico. A friend had connected me with someone and it worked so well that I I hired another and then another. And and this was April and and by August I had hired 10. Um, And so just, and we never, we never fired anybody with, if you have good staff, by all means, keep them regardless of where they are, they're worth their weight in gold. But as positions came up naturally, as the companies grew, we looked at positions and said, can this be done remotely? And the answer was often yes. Uh, And it was so successful that eventually we founded a company specifically to help other people doing that, uh, Gordian Staffing, and we now have almost 500 employees uh, through that company. Yeah. So so tell us, um, you know, quite staffing um, changed or shifted from this office environment into this work from home and remote environment? Well, Gordian Staffing was always founded to be a remote staffing company. Um, Our other company, we just kind of pivoted. As I said, we've bought quite a few, sold a couple. Um, And one of our real advantages is that we never worked in a corporate world. We have zero experience. We had no idea what we were doing. And so we tried a lot of stuff and a lot of it was really dumb and we survived somehow, but some of it was actually pretty cool stuff that worked. So we kept the cool stuff and we got, didn't do the dumb stuff more than twice. And that's how Gordian came about. The other question that, um, since everything is remote and dispersed, how do you monitor productivity? Like how, what is, how does that, how does that work? That's a common question we get. And one of the things I'm quick to point out is you're not paying for a person's time. You're paying for what they produce in that time. Now they should show up. They should, you know, clock in, clock out. They should be there and be productive. But the real question is, are they getting the work done? So it really helps to, instead of looking at positions and saying, I need somebody to sit in this chair for eight hours, (laughs) say, I need somebody to answer 70 to 80 phone calls a day. I need a missed call percentage of less than 3%. I need a customer satisfaction rate of 98%. Put it into those terms and focus on the output. And then once you have that, you'll be able to scale better and you'll be able to oversee your employees better, both domestic and remote. Interesting. I love this idea of productivity versus hours, uh, getting results because you know I've I've heard of people they just basically kind of stall just for their time and uh, nothing ever gets done. The other thing is talking about this idea is how do you ensure company culture spreads when no one is in the office? Hey, you know, is there such thing as company culture, and uh, what are your thoughts on that? It's a absolutely still is company culture, but you have to work at it a lot more. It's kind of like a long distance relationship. You've got to put the effort in, you've got to put the time in. The first thing you have to do is as trite as it may be, is you have to know what your culture is. Like you can't just say, oh, we have a great company culture. It's going to spread, you know, via um, uh, osmosis. Like if you don't know what it is, people aren't going to know what it is either. So you have to come up with These are our priorities. It doesn't need to be a vision statement or a mission statement or any of that stuff. I mean, it's good. We have one. But the honest to God truth is you just have to know what's important. Why are you doing what you're doing? Is it just to make a paycheck? Absolutely nothing wrong with that. Capitalism has driven this world forward. Knock yourself out. But be transparent. We're here to make the most money in the shortest amount of time. Great. That's, That's the kind of people you want. Awesome. Us 
for one of our key components is charity. We give very generously out of every company. We made a commitment that we're never going to take home more in personal salary than we give away to charity. So that's that's a key part of who we are. Tomorrow, actually, we're having a work day in our Guadalajara office at one of our charities. So yeah, you, you just got to figure that out and then put the time in. Make sure you communicate it, talk about it, make it obvious. The other question I have is this idea where employees, certain employees, they're um, they're in the office and they're closer to send. Is there any um, discrepancy or any bias? Because they always say uh, proximity, proximity uh, bias. Uh, is there? Do you do you notice that? Honestly, yeah. I wish I could say there isn't, but I, I think honestly there is, and that's where the metrics and that's where the numbers come in handy because. Being friendly with somebody doesn't make them a good employee just because they're present in the office. You may like them better. You may have a better connection, but you've got to boil it down to who's putting the best effort in, who's getting the best results for the team, um, and also who's a better fit, who who jives better. We, we recently had to let somebody go that, though he certainly tried his best, culture-wise was a complete and total disaster. Um, and so you, you've got to take that into account. But honestly, yeah, I do think you're going to find a proximity bias. And as a manager, you're going to have to work harder to to not fall into that trap. Dysfunctional fa- dysfunctional companies, with when they were in the office and now with this remote setup, does that set them up for success or failure? If you were good, you're going to get better. If you were bad, you're going to get worse. Um, <laughs> it just We were fortunate because we did remote before COVID, like this, this has always been part of our philosophy, which is not to say you can't make a radical change, but it's got to be exactly that. You can't just limp along, you know, you can't just say, Hey, do you have the Whitman file? You know, it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. You have to have systems and checklists and processes. The great thing about that though, is that your company is going to come out the other side stronger, whether you come back to the office or not, it's going to strengthen your company. Yeah. Um, and so let's talk about more about your, you know, Gordian staffing. What sort of staffing solutions do you do, you know, for either entrepreneurs or people looking? Um, we'll start the conversation there. I mean, the very short answer is that we're a recruiter. We just recruit a little farther away. So people come to us, they say, I need an AP clerk or I need a customer service rep or a personal assistant. We go out, we find that person, we do the pre-screening, the interviews, we present them to the candidate, uh, to the client, they get to interview them and pick their, their favor of the round. We take advantage of the difference in cost of living. So for the sake of round numbers, if somebody domestic would cost you $18 an hour and with payroll burden and taxes is going to be 20, we could probably get that person for around 10. And then the flip side of that is, we're actually paying them a lot better on $10 an hour than somebody domestic making 20. They get full medical, they get restaurant and food tickets, they get a savings fund, they get treated very well. And as a result, we attract better candidates, we keep them for longer, uh, and it's just a better, it's a win-win for everybody. They work for that client on a permanent, full-time, exclusive basis. Yeah, interesting. And then the other, and then the other question I have is this idea of when you you how do you keep seven businesses and counting spinning without you know losing everything organization you talk about organization time blocking and delegation i mean you gotta have a good team you gotta have people you trust you gotta check up on the people you trust (laughs) you got you gotta have metrics you gotta have guidelines actually in the last couple months we've merged two sets of companies so we've gone from seven to five uh, and then we've sold one. So we're down to four companies now. Um, so that's definitely helped because uh, I think we did overextend just a little bit. But you have to keep things, they've got to be connected. You can't just buy a restaurant and a factory and, you know, you, you, it, they've got to have some underlying thread. So all of my companies, they either shared a clientele they worked for one another. My st- my staffing company did staffing for all of them. My two accounting firms did accounting, stuff like that. So yeah, I would just say you need a good team. You need regular check-ins. You need, um, uh, you need to give the clear direction and the boundaries. I find that giving people the goal and the boundaries, they can go pretty far, um, but you have to make sure that's clear. Um, and I'm not even sure I'm, I'm the best example. I'm just doing it. Doesn't mean I'm doing it well. <laughs> Ask me in a couple of years. 
yeah, fascinating discussion. And um, how can people contact you, follow you, uh, reach out to you, um, check out your social media, et cetera? Best way is just find me on LinkedIn, uh, Rob Buffington, Gordian Staffing. We're pretty visible. Um, I'm always happy to shoot the breeze and just, you know, let people pick my brain, see what I can contribute. Um, I like helping people. I do what I do because I like helping people. I wanted to be a teacher when I was younger, and then I realized I hate kids. Um, so now I'm a consultant instead. Yeah, consulting is one of those uh, really nice uh, jobs. And yeah, th- so th- for the audience, let's thank um, Rob for coming on to the show, talking about staffing. Really interesting. You can reach out to him. All of his links will be in the resources in the show notes. And with that, thanks so much for coming on to the podcast. Thanks for having me.